Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now this is the 8800 GTS Alpha Dog 512MB edition graphics card from XFX. To be honest, it offers no difference over the reference 512MB card and despite what you may think, it wasn't overclocked from the factory. At the time of its launch in late 2007, you would have received a free copy of Company of Heroes as well as a unique XFX double lifetime warranty, meaning that not only you but the next owner of the card would be covered under warranty as well. It's unlikely, but if I were the second owner of this GPU, then it would still be covered by XFX and even better, that warranty wouldn't be voided by overclocking or aftermarket heat sinks either. So 10 years ago, you could expect to pay around $300 for this thing, but I paid the equivalent of just $15, £12. 10 years later and due to the lack of DirectX 11 support, it's no surprise I found this thing sitting all alone on a shelf at the local second hand store. It was waiting to be given a second chance, another go at gaming, and today we're going to be doing just that. Can we teach this old alpha dog new tricks or was it best left on the shelf? Well let's find out. So first of all we tested a couple of older titles, games this card would have been used to and starting with Crisis we set the game to 1080p with the medium preset to achieve an average of 45fps over the course of half an hour. We did see some frame drops at times and dropping the resolution would have smoothed things out but it's nice to know that Full HD is more than achievable with this card. Fallout 3 also hit 45 FPS on average when combining combat and general exploration. Again this was at full HD with the high preset this time and the 8800 GTS wipes the floor with the original Xbox 360 and PS3 versions of this game. Despite the occasional dips, there were no significant issues even at this resolution and I could happily play the entirety of this game using this card. Before moving on to a couple of newer titles, we tried Half-Life 2 at the highest settings and it's no surprise that the game ran flawlessly with over 100 FPS most of the time, if not all of the time. Sure it's an old game, but it's a classic and it's always worth testing games like this out just to see how they hold up. So next up it's CSGO, again at Full HD with the lowest graphical settings. 100 FPS was the average here and I'm very happy with this card's performance. At the time of its release, Nvidia were aiming for the absolute best performance to price with this thing and at £12 10 years later, it looks like it's still doing just that. On to some more demanding games now and firstly we have Bioshock Infinite. For these games we've switched to 1360 by 768 as this was the recommended resolution as set by the game and after testing it at 1080p, it is a little bit much for this old girl with these newer games. So Bioshock here ran at 50 frames on average at the uh, 768 resolution. During combat this went down but it never dipped below 30. We were also using the low preset here as it looked a little better than very low but not too much worse than medium and offered way more frames. Finally it's GTA 5. With DX10 mode and everything turned down as low as it would go, including population density, hence why there aren't too many people about, we averaged 40 FPS and the game didn't stray too far from this regardless of the situation. GTA 5 has always seemed more CPU intensive and you could probably turn the settings up a little and still maintain at least 30 frames per second, but these were what the game defaulted to and they definitely worked best. Well there we have it. I've really enjoyed my day with this card and I think it's definitely up there with some of my favourite older GPUs despite the lack of DX11 support. It's nice to see that it still has what it takes to run some newer titles providing they don't require DX11 and if you can find one for even a little bit more than what I paid then I think it's definitely worth it to enjoy some of those older games with reasonable frame rates. So there we have it guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. As always be sure to leave a like if you did, leave a dislike if you didn't, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.